Hello and welcome back to KSP Ad Astra. Today we're talking about life support. All of our missions today are in part furthering that journey and keeping us in space for as long as possible. So if you'd like to see more of this type of stuff, could you please like, share, comment, and subscribe? It helps me out, it helps you out, and it, uh, well, it helps me out a little bit more, but it would be nice if you could do it. It's always great. Um, but yeah, here we are. We're with Astra 6. It's flying on a Lazarus 1, the troubled reusable rocket that can't seem to be reused because of the sheer amount of times it just fails to land in the ocean. So here we are. We're flying off with Artur Samarin, Wilfred Schmidt, and Kahren Kerman. Kahren Kerman is actually not an astronaut. He is a tourist. He's actually more likely a payload specialist, and he is going to Metzli Station to repair one of the solar panels as a part of a mission uh, given to us by the uh, by the mission control or whatever it's called. Uh, but here we are. The second stage is currently coming in, or the first stage is currently coming in for a landing, and it's having trouble. It's rolling, and yeah, there's a reason why I didn't put it all the way up and like I do normally because it crashes which is very unfortunate but here we are with the second stage making its way to the MUN exhausting that reusable second stage which we've never seemed to ever reuse and here it is coming in for the smoothest encounter that I've ever um, I've ever had because uh, it is completely direct we are getting there just in time to just need to cut all of our velocity so that we can dock this is the quickest these kerbals have ever come to the station and if you just saw those messages at the top that is the reason why the next mission is so important uh so our kerbals didn't die because i had set the uh i had changed the settings of the life support to make it harder and because I had done that, um, apparently our Kerbals wandered off to the space station, um, which is weird. Uh, they they wandered off of the space station and somehow wound up at, KS, the, at the KSC. How that happens, I have no clue. Um, they should have been killed in action. I don't understand how it didn't work that way. But yeah, um, I am going to correct that, and by correcting that, I'm going to actually cause two more Kerbals to wander off to the space station in this launch right here. Um, and actually, all of the Kerbals on Liberty Station are also going to wander off as well uh, when we refill them in about... 120 days uh, the Kerbals that are just on the ground there are just gonna disappear so that's gonna be a little awkward uh, yeah but here we have the uh, Mun station two things docked to it they won't stay docked for long I'm gonna undock both of them and then have both of them deorbit uh, but here we are with Metzli's life support and it's on a Phoenix One, our new reusable rocket. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing anything reusable with this launch. We do have a second launch of one of these later on, but as you can see, it is a much more powerful rocket. S screams off the pad. It has those big, giant engines on the side, and these, uh, and one of the main. It's not a swivel. I forget the name of the engines. It also has a. Uh, little motors that get you away from the craft. Um, I implemented those when I was testing the craft, but it's it actually doesn't need them, so it's actually not going to be included in later craft. But yeah, that's our uh, that's our life support system that is going to be docked to the station, which will allow for um, much longer stays at the station. Um, it nearly bankrupted us uh, launching this. Uh, we had enough for uh, one more mission, and that one more mission is our next Phoenix, uh, our new Phoenix uh, rocket. 
uh, the second one. And yeah, we're we're kind of we're kind of hurting. So we're gonna have to do a lot of just maintenance missions in the next episode. Just getting those crew contracts down, getting those just all of those contracts. That is what next episode is going to be on, and that will be coming out next week. But here we are, finally getting ourselves to the Mun. And here we are. I'm going to just create a little bit of a, um, <coughs> a little bit of a, like, encounter here. Now, I thought it would have been a perfect encounter. It wasn't a perfect encounter, but that's fine. But here we are, coming in towards the Mun, and. We are going to be docking with Metzli Station, and it's kind of unfortunate that we don't have a station currently in low Kerbin orbit, but don't worry, I'm actually going to be very soon, once we have enough money, launching multiple uh, space stations in uh, Kerbin orbit, and some of them will be in odd orbits, which will make it kind of hard to get to, but that is perfectly fine. Now. Here we are, we have captured around the Mun, and we are going to be getting our encounter very soon. Uh, took several hours, but we I accidentally targeted the wrong thing. I did not target Metzli Station, I targeted another craft, but that is fine because this gets us in a similar orbit, and uh, I just had to change the, the amount of time between them. So it's a, about one day or so um, before we can encounter them. It's about one day and two hours, which is not bad because there are no Kerbals on board and it is just a life support system. It, it quite literally won't do anything. But here's where I had issue. From this point on in the episode, well, not from this point on, but from a little later from now on in the episode, the lights on the station stopped working and the lights on the craft stopped working. And I think it was just because I had Kerbal Space Program open for way too long and was running into all sorts of like uh, RAM issues uh, because like all lights just stopped working. Um, they would show up when you were in the sun, but as soon as you were on like the dark side of the planet, stopped working. Uh, don't know what that issue is. Hopefully it'll be fixed next episode. I think it's just a little bug because I had the game open way too long. There's a lot of bugs that show up in KSP when you have the game open too long. It's one of the reasons why KSP2 was supposed to be so great is because it would get rid of code like that that caused bugs or the RAM issues because it, was, it just has horrible, horrible, horrible memory leakage. Um, but no, no, that's, that, that's not going to do anything. Uh, I am thinking about uh, upgrading my CPU pretty soon, so it can, because it is probably the worst bottleneck I have. It's actually an atrocious bottleneck. I have like a 26, I have like a 2600X, and uh, that is like a, yeah, it's a 5 2600X, and that is not at all comparing to my, um, my 3070 GPU, uh, which is... Yeah, that's just not gonna. That's just not gonna help. But here we are. We're coming in. We're close enough to get our docking, our docking node. But as anyone knows, this is going to take up like half our mission time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the this is sped up at five times speed. Uh, docking is probably the slowest thing in all of Kerbal Space Program, especially if you want to do it right. Um, I also don't have the automatic docking, uh, the automatic docking maneuver thing yet uh, in the mech jab. If so, I would have just used that. It's a little bit quicker and it's, it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit more reckless, but I kinda like to use it um, just so I'm not having to deal with sitting down here for the while where I do it. Plus, right now, I'm also doing the whole thing with the docking camera. The docking camera is uh, is quite great. I actually really enjoy the docking camera because uh, it's, it's 
It's like what the, the astronaut sees. Uh, but I don't want to be inside of the craft. Um, I heard someone was telling me to do like the IVA mod and I, I just, I don't really do it. Um, but here we are, we're lining up perfectly with the station and here we are, we are docked. And that is our life support module with plenty and plenty of snacks. Um, all lined up. I was just checking to see if it was working. And here we have Astra 7 on a Phoenix 1. And finally, we will see the Phoenix rise from the ashes, I guess you could say. Uh, and I mean, listen to those engines. They're super powerful. This has Ar Archer Smith, Fred Bailey, and I believe one more. I don't actually have my book that I keep to write all the names in them with me right now. But it adds one more Kerbal on board. And here we are. We are currently almost to orbit. I'm going to disengage the autopilot. And then I'm going to drop off the second stage. And there they go off on their way to the MUN while the second stage is currently flipping around i shut off multiple of the um the outer engines and made sure that the inner engine and three just three total engines are working and they're in a perfect line and that will help us produce enough thrust to keep us from hitting the ground i also turned off the roll mechanic on the uh fins because i feel like that is probably one of our issues when we're coming in I also have aero brakes up on the upper stage, which will allow us to slow down our descent. And here we go. A perfect landing in the ocean. Granted, we do tip over and we do lose that control module, but that is okay. We got most of, we got the most expensive parts uh, actually refunded, which is great. And that is the reason why we do the thing that we do with the reusable rockets because we get just a bunch of refunded money and the Phoenix 2 will be an SSTO that happens to have a payload on board. Uh, it's not going to be like a traditional SSTO with wings and stuff like that. It's just going to be like a starship that can get all the way to orbit. Um, that'll, that'll be great. Um, unfortunately, maybe the Lazarus 1, uh, Maybe I can make the Lazarus one like a little launch vehicle, like a little reusable launch vehicle for like payloads of less than like 10 tons. I think, I think that that would be probably the most advantageous thing for the Lazarus to become rather than a heavy launch vehicle because it is, the, the design is just kind of, it's a little messed up, especially with the one engine. There's not enough vectoring or gimbling that can be done with that engine so it just kind of has a lot of trouble uh but here we are coming in we are going to be uh basically approaching the station the i left the payload on a suborbital tra trajectory so that it will hit the mun and we won't have more space debris which also causes lag and here we are approaching the station with Craig Price, Archer Samarin, and Fred Bailey. The three musketeers, two of them are very much veterans. And they are going to be docking with Metzley Station in the dark, complete darkness. And they will be our heroes of the day coming back to the space station that sent them home earlier. Uh, but here we are, and these guys, they will be able to stay up here for as long as possible. Now, I'm going to keep doing the, uh, that every quarter, every quarter of a year, they're going to get swapped out, but it's nice to actually be able to do that every quarter of a year rather than them just wandering off, which would be nice, and then... Uh, I'm going to be sending down a life support system for Liberty Base um, as soon as possible. And that will be able to, uh, you know, make our Kerbals a little less hungry. Because it was in the dark, I forgot the uh, the docking port was actually on the back of this, of this little um, capsule that I've designed. 
Uh, if you didn't know, the capsule on this little thing is backwards. Uh, so it actually docks where its engines are, um, which I thought would be like a cool little quirk that this uh, that this type of capsule has. But yeah, this is pretty much the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I would like to see you guys next time. Let's just get a little peek of it in the sun. Oh, they're perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was a great episode. And goodbye.